sunshine of her life There's a ready young filly But mom and daddy won't let her leave Mom and papa won't let her go But when they go out dancing All right, this uh, episode on camper van heating um i'm very fortunate i think to have uh, come across this setup that uh i ended up buying and it's probably the reason i pulled the trigger on this on this particular uh vehicle um it has a propane ambient heater in it and um that is absolutely golden if you've ever spent um, or attempted to spend um, an extended period of time um, off grid in the winter time it um, you've probably come across issues with your RV batteries running low due to your standard RV furnaces which have a blower um, the blowers will, you know, if you use them really conservatively, I don't know, I, 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 I spent about a week, I say, and using it only in the morning for like maybe an hour or less, and at night just, just to get some heat, because it was about minus, uh, probably around minus seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, in that range um, during the week that I spent off grid in the in the Kootenai area um, and uh, luckily I was near a hot spring and uh, pretty much lived in that hot spring the whole time between that and a couple hours a day of heat in the van and then my my fur my batteries were done um, I, I, I guess you know solar would definitely help um, but still, I, I, even with solar, be, I, I would think that that system would be a, pretty much a waste uh, of your of your energy. You could be spending it in other places. Um, so anyway, this this particular uh, unit that I have, um, it, it vents and exhausts all the um, all the gases from the propane outside the vehicle, but yet doesn't require electricity or a, or a um, uh, heater uh, or a forced air uh, fan to run uh, the heat so um, I as long as I got an 80 bottle or 80 80 liter bottle of propane um, mounted under the truck that can uh, run this ambient furnace for probably a long I've, I've, I've run it for eight days and we're, I mean like all night uh, and up until about noon, um, and being early, you know, it's still fall, it's, um, daytime temperatures are still pushing 10 degrees, and, uh, so, and then I'm out and about and doing stuff, so usually I just kind of hang out and, you know, kind of get out around noon or so, but, um, you know, so from about dinner time till the next day at around you know, say 11 o'clock. Um, I ran it last time for about eight days without a fuel up. Took it in to refill the propane uh, bottle, and uh, it was cost me around $26, I believe. And that was all my cooking for eight days, as well as the heating. So, um, and requiring absolutely no electricity whatsoever to run either the propane stove nor the furnace so that was great um, the only thing about this furnace that I don't really like is that it does have some mechanical parts in it um, thermal couple and a few things uh, as any furnace would but um, it seems to be a little sketchy at times so at this time of year not a big deal if it kind of goes for a crap but I'm not gonna die out there. I'm just gonna have to put an extra sweater on and some stuff. But 
um, I felt that I needed a backup because, um, yeah, I just wanted something that it, that, you know, has a, uh, has a little bit of, a little bit more reliability or even two sources of heat with limited liability is better than, you know, one for one thing, but you no, know, not as good as like a, a like a, a wood stove or something like that. So uh, I looked into the Cubic Mini, and I really want one, but uh, I was kind of worried a little bit about the smell of smoke and um, just the overall dirtiness of uh, of having a, a wood stove in your vehicle, which is not, I mean, it's not bad, it's not bad. And um, you just got to get a brush and, you know, maybe a little dirt, uh, dirt devil or something like that, and, you know, I'm sure you'd be just perfectly fine but uh and i've got a lot of experience with wood heat uh so that's not my not my vice at all but um i happened upon this antique shop and as i was looking through this antique shop it was full of old mining equipment and stuff and i came across this uh really interesting thing it was a kerosene heater and uh it was probably from the 30s or something and I thought, wow, that you know, that thing's about the right size for my for my for my van. And um, you know, but it was old. You know, it's an antique, and I don't know if you can get the the wick and all that stuff for it. So I didn't buy it. Plus, they wanted five hundred bucks for it or something. So um, the biggest reason I didn't buy it probably was just uh, not knowing when I could get a replacement wick for it. So um, I got online and I, I never even thought about kerosene heaters before, but I typed it in and, and sure enough, there's lots of kerosene heaters on the market. And uh, and there were a couple at my local Canadian Tire. So um, I went down there and I, and I, and I took a look and um, I uh, actually pulled the trigger on one. So now I have the, uh, I'll flip this camera around. So here is my kerosene heater that I purchased at Canadian Tire for, I believe it was $299 plus tax. And it is the HeatMate um, HMN-110C. And uh, what it does is it projects the heat straight forward instead of around. And um, like some of the, most of the heaters, I think all the, all the models they had there were uh, a 360 degree heater. This one shoots the heat out forward. So that's nice. I can put it right up against uh, flammable or uh, combustible surface and not worry about catching it on fire because the heat is actually going straight forward and the back of the unit is actually quite cool to the touch. Now pros and cons on this heater um, are it does have an odor. Um, it's not bad. When you first start it up, for they say for the first out, four hours of operation, it's going to give off some odor, which it has for sure. Um, other than you know, pretty much my entire bus and everything I own smelling a bit like kerosene at this point, um, it does give off a ton of heat. So this particular one is rated at. 400 square feet. I believe its max output is 10,000 BTU. So with 10,000 BTUs and absolutely no power required, um, you have a reliable heat source for um, cold, cold climates. So uh, if I was living in an area that's typically from zero to 10 degrees or above uh, Celsius. Uh, I don't believe, um, I don't know, maybe maybe I would still buy this, but um, 
The really nice thing about this heater is that it provides so much heat so quickly that um, it will raise the temperature in my van up to, I had it on for 45 minutes the other day and my interior temperature gauge had risen up to 37 degrees. Um, <laughs> I think it would have hit 40 if I left it going, but um, at that point it was it was getting silly. So um, I just left it. Uh, I, I shut it down. Um, so for me, I, I have a primary source being my ambient my ambient heater um, furnace that runs on propane. Uh, this will is more than adequate actually it runs uh, I let this run all the time and uh, it will maintain a temperature on the very minimum setting with my van with zero insulation I haven't even started to insulate this thing yet but um, with no insulation uh, that ambient heater is capable of keeping about 18 degrees on a on a night where it's about two to three degrees outside. Um, so if I crank it up a little bit, dial goes up to 10. I don't know. I've, 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 a couple days ago, I switched it up to about two or three, I believe on the dial and that kept the van at 23 degrees all night. So, and it was well under five. It was, it was two, probably between uh, one and three degrees for most of that night. Um, but in the morning, I didn't even touch the dial here. I didn't even touch that dial. I just thought, well, there was a, I don't know, it was 23 degrees in the van still, but you know, I don't know. I, I, I was just fiddling around with this heater. So I just turned it on and wham, you know, it was back up to 35 degrees inside the van. Like, uh, I, I, I really like how that dries everything out. Um, I mean, it creates this, this heat that just, it's, it's, you have to experience that. Um, and it's nice to know that you can do that, that, um, you know, if you really want to raise your, your, your body temperature up to something, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, excessively warm. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't even do that in my old house. You know, like, I don't think I, I I've never had my house up to 37 degrees. You know, I, and I wouldn't even want to think about if if that was even possible. How much gas, natural gas, or whatever the heat source, baseboards, or you know, if you tried to do that in in a house, um, you know, it, that would be extremely expensive if it's even possible. Unless you get a wood stove, of course. But um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's nice. I, I really like that. Like um, being able to. Uh, just crank this thing up and uh, that wasn't even cranking this thing this thing was just sitting on minimum when it when it boosted the temperature inside the vehicle up to 37 degrees I, I you know I could have I could have actually increased it but on the, on the on the flip side again um, the kerosene itself is not cheap it's not that cheap considering how much this thing can burn through um, I don't consider it to be an adequate primary source at all um, I think it's great to have in the van just as a little accessory and, you know, if you feel like getting silly and boosting, boosting the heat up and, you know, relaxing and you're, you know, pra you know naked <laughs> when it's zero degrees or, or even less outside, then, uh, you know, that's, that's nice to know that you can do that if you want to. Um, I'm definitely not worried about getting cold in the wintertime with this thing in the van. Um, so there's the positives, but the negatives are definitely the mess. Uh, the kerosene is, is difficult to handle without spilling little bits of it. When you spill a little bit of it, it stinks like really bad. Um, uh, it's oily. Um, it doesn't just evaporate. Um, and you know, I found it really pretty much impossible to this point to, uh, to be able to refill that tank. And, um, you know, without spilling something, you know, you just one little tiny drip somewhere and it just, it, it just, it, it stinks like so bad, you know, it's there. And, um, 
you know, I had to take this thing outside of the vehicle to refill the tank and I wipe it down with paper towels and I clean it and, and then I reinstall it and still there's something, you know, I can smell it. It's somewhere. It's, it's, it, it dripped somewhere. But, um, and then when you fire it up, uh, you're, it's recommended that you, uh, I keep a, a, a um, carbon monoxide detector handy it's going and uh it's never even picked up anything off this this heater so um either it's not working right or this heater is working the way it's supposed to i guess um which means there's that's it's it's fine you can have it inside your vehicle and you know they say you should have it vented um and the amount of heat that this thing puts out, I'd have no issue with cracking some windows if I had to, even though this is um, an old school bus and there's plenty of ventilation, even with everything shut. Um, what else can I say about this? So, yeah, it, um, I'm, I'm definitely, it's definitely messy. It's definitely very, very difficult to handle inside your vehicle inside of inside of a bus like this and or van whatever anything mobile you're gonna have probably some some issues with uh you know spilling that kerosene um luckily a four beat if you run the tank completely dry you buy a four liter bottle at walmart of uh 1k which is the cleanest kerosene you could buy and um it costs about $17, and I haven't run this thing out yet. I ran it out, I bought a liter to start with, which cost me $5. And um, that seemed to last, I don't know, I think I ran it about a week intermittently on that. So, you know, a few hours total, I guess, um, maybe two or three hours total for that liter, which was 5 bucks. So... You know, if you're freezing, if you're really cold and you don't have adequate heat and you got one of these things in here, that five bucks is going to be well worth it. But uh, can it compete with a Cubic Mini? I don't think so. Um, is it easier than a Cubic Mini? For sure. Like, you don't have to worry about any setup at all. You pull it out of the box and you pull the cardboard off of it and uh, you're pretty much ready to go. No drilling holes in your van or anything like that no smokestacks and you know so so that makes this thing you know if you just need something for a for a top up once in a while um and you just want to get your van hot once in a while then this is probably a decent option um otherwise the only other complaint that i've had so far with it is that um the kerosene does leak when i travel over a dirt road um, it seems to it's like the kerosene container can bounce and uh, it seems to be letting small amounts of kerosene out which get trapped inside the, um, the heater or at the base of the heater um, so I've wiped that up a couple of times and uh, of course that smells so you, you're driving along you start smelling kerosene and say oh no now now what what's going on with that stupid heater again so you know is it i have to say that um this thing is really really difficult um and the consequences are of course every time spilling kerosene somewhere in your vehicle so i would recommend some sort of a trap for it like um, a base plastic base that would catch any dripping kerosene if you're traveling over bumpy roads a lot and um yeah so it's definitely not the ace in the hole but um it is it is nice when it's running and it's and it's good so uh that's about all i can say about this so far um considering what i need to do i think this is this was just a step towards um my cubic mini i think that the cubic mini is definitely worth uh although i have no ex personal experience with one what i've heard is that they're pretty good and 
everybody seems to like them and they don't have these kinds of issues that I'm I'm dealing with with this so um, yeah cheap solution for instant quick heat but it comes at a price of um, maintenance and well I shouldn't say maintenance I haven't turned a screw on this thing yet but it is definitely um, something you have to be careful with and uh, Definitely expect to have some contamination in your vehicle uh, and in your life in general with with the kerosene. Um, I'm pretty fresh at this, but I don't really see too many solutions to it. I think it's going to be an ongoing issue. So there is your kerosene heater. It actually looks like something out of like a, a nuclear reactor or something like that. Hmm. Wonder what's better for you: the fumes from this kerosene heater or exposure to radiation? Hmm. Anyway, so, but this is the plus side. This has been running for about half an hour, maybe not even, and it's boosted my temperature inside the van up to 29 degrees, and it is still climbing, and it will climb. It will climb towards 40 easily. Um, so, yeah, I've got like a, you know, you can do like a 20 minute burn and get it nice and toasty inside. And um, yeah, you know, depending on how cold it is outside, your residual heat loss. But I definitely don't have any issues with, uh, with heat now that I have this thing. It is hot and it is working good a little smelly but it works over and out when the red light shines on the streets of hate where the devil dies Who knows what he ate It's a simple thing Trying to stay afloat The captain said Without his boat Some things are getting better all the things a little worse It's a situation Much like a curse